Here is printing a multi-plate etching. I've got two plates here. The images are completely different, but the plates are almost identical in size, as close as I could get them. Things get a little more complicated when you're printing multiple plate etchings. For every plate, presumably, you're needing a different color. And for each color, you're going to need an ink knife and a rubber squeegee and a dedicated piece of tarlatan. This is why you often will see multiple colors of tarlatan hanging. You're also going to need gloves, different gloves for each color. You want to avoid getting things mixed up. I'm going to start here with a blue. And like any can of ink, I'm going to scrape it lightly from the top, trying not to gouge the ink. If we gouge the ink, the ink tends to dry out and get little chunks and things in it, and it takes more work to sieve out those chunks, and the ink lasts not nearly as long. And here's a second color, different knife, same thing. And I don't need a huge amount of ink. Of course, if I'm printing a large edition, I want more ink out. But if I'm taking it right out of the can, I can take it out a little at a time. I'm going to start here inking up my blue plate. One of the things you're going to notice if you've never printed anything other than, say, black or maybe a earth tone ink, is that colored ink is different. It's sticky. It is tacky. You have to work physically harder to remove it. And whether it's a psychological thing or a reality thing, plate tone tends to be a little more noticeable. And here are both of my plates, the blue on the left and the red on the right, both inked ahead of time and ready to go. So moving to the press, I've decided to print the red plate first. And you should know that the order in which you print your plates will affect how the piece looks in the end. Subsequent plates tend to be crisper than those printed earlier on. Also, ink tends to mix with one another differently. So my paper goes down, and my paper has to be at least two or three inches longer than the plate on either end, because the whole trick to printing a multiple plate etching is that you can leave the paper trapped under the cylinder and switch out plates. So we're on the other side of the, the press bed. The press is moved through, and I'm going to carefully lift up the paper, but I've left the paper trapped under the cylinder. Again, I want to control the variables here. If that paper can't move, or at least I can't take it out, I know that when I lay it back down, it will be in exactly the spot that I need it to be in. So very carefully, because I do not have a lot of room under there, I've got a blue shop towel and a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and I'm cleaning up my mylar. I'm being really careful and slow. And I can take my time here. The paper is still damp. It shouldn't dry out. If it does, or if I've taken a really long time, I can always spritz it slightly with a spray bottle of water. But that, typically is not necessary. So carefully, and in the right orientation, and that's the key, I slide my second plate in, clean the edges, and then gently lay the paper back down, and then the blankets, and then roll it through to the other side. Now, in this particular case, I can roll the press right off the paper. I don't need to leave it trapped. And here is the finished two-plate print. I'm getting beautiful texture, beautiful detail from that soft ground plate, the leaf, and then the digitally generated pattern that I applied via a photo etch onto the red plate. And here is the plate, here's the blue plate, which as you'll recall, I printed second. And what you're seeing is offset red ink from the first plate. So the first plate printed, and then it transferred the red ink onto this plate. So before I can re-ink this blue plate, I'm likely going to have to take a bit of vegetable oil and a blue shop towel and clean off the red offset ink so that my colors don't get muddy and I can maintain consistency throughout my edition. 